Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us. Can we give God praise again just for being alive? Come on. We who are alive in this season, as we look at the statistics, both locally, regionally, and certainly on a worldwide basis. One major nation, well, the United States, they average 450,000 deaths from the COVID, with millions infected and counting. You need to give God the praise. You woke up this morning, and as we say, God started you on your way. You need to give him praise. Amen. And even while we are at it, or, okay, let me just let you know, I am Apostle Vivian Duncan, on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, welcoming you to our program. It's your date with destiny. At Divine Destiny Worship Center, Worship is a doing word, a verb, and not a noun. So I want to pray for you. Some of you who are looking at us right now, hearing this word right now, depression has come your way. Fear has come your way. You want to fall up and just shut off the world, but you have to go to work. You have to to see about your daily affairs. So I'm recommending to you Psalm 42, all of Psalm 42, but especially verse 5, and I'm decreeing it. Speak this to your soul as I speak it to your soul. O oh, soul, why art thou cast down? Why art thou disquieted in me? Right away he addressed both Depression, which pulls you in a hole, and what? Yes, anxiety, which pulls you by the scruff of your neck and then drops you again. But he says, I am defiant. I shall yet praise him. I'll say it again, and you say it with me. I shall yet praise him, for he is the help of my countenance. That's verse 5. And we run quickly to the last verse. Verse 9. What does he say? David says, he's poking fun at his soul right now because he has gone into a new orbit. He says, oh soul, why are you cast down? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. And this time he says, for he is the health of my continence. He moved from a six o'clock phase to a quarter past nine phase. I decree, so it shall be for you in the name of Jesus. Okay, so we continue to pursue our Heal Our Land campaign beginning with your own private space, which is your body, then your home, neighborhood, community, nation, and all the regional territories. Heal our land, Lord, heal our land. And God has given us a song to go with it. Apostle Jim and I, we continue to sing that song. And now the entire congregation is singing it. And now the entire uh, listenership and viewership of our Facebook and so on and so on all over. Sing with us. Heal our land, Lord. Heal our land. Hello. 
Let's go. Ilola Lori, Ilola, Ilola Lori, Ilola. On every woman, the Lord and the land. Oh, what your spirit, Lord and He. Ilola Nade, Ilola Lori, Ilola. Speak to us, Lord. Speak, and we will listen. Teach, and we will learn. Anoint us, Lord. We empower you. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, mm. it will shall it be salted. Mm -hmm. It is therefore thenceforth good for nothing, mm -hmm. but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. Right. So if the, we had any uh, nebulousness, as it were, cloudiness in your thinking as to what did Elisha do? What did God lead Elisha to do? Because he was a prophet. What did God really lead Elisha to do? And what was the, the outcome? What really pushed the outcome of this healing process? We have said it uh, um, since we, we started last Thursday talking about it. And now the Lord is saying, let's, let's solve the mystery. What did he throw into the very heart of the city and the healing came? For us, what does God prescribe for change to come in our nations? He said, I am like Elisha now. I, your God, am the Elisha, and you are my salt. I'm going to throw you into places. I'm going to put you into places. And that's why, as we said, many are going to get promotion. When you are at a higher level on your job, you command more respect mm -hmm. and a wider level of authority. And many who have been bypassed and are prophesying it right now mm -hmm. to you, if you have your oil, get your oil part of your healing, take your oil, tip it on your, tip your finger with it. Hallelujah. And just put it right on your forehead. And declare, I am destined for the top. Come on, declare it. Um, I, am, I, I no. am destined for the top. And let's declare it how we say at Divine Destiny. I am on, on my, my way, way to, to the, the top. top and, and I, I cannot, cannot be, stopped. be stopped. And declare it again. I, I am, am on, on my, my way, way to, to the, the top, top. And, and I, I cannot, cannot be, stopped be stopped. And proclaim it loudly. So... Meet, Meet me, me at, at the, the top. top. 
I declare that being bypassed all the time by people who are jealous of you and also not just jealous, but really intimidated by you. You, you're a junior to them, but they, they see what you have inside there. We declare that they're gonna have to make way for you to get up. All those who've been blocking you on the ladder, God says, I, I want you in a place on that job. I want you in a, in a place in that family mm. where your influence has, has nothing to do with your experience, has to do with your influence that I am going to release through you for positive change to take place. Somebody need to shout glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let it be, Lord. I'm that person that you have chosen. I'm willing to go. So you are the salt of the earth. So if the earth needs healing, it's we, God's people. And But Jesus says, pay attention to this. Salt without its taste, its savor, its, its um, chemical construct. Salt that has been just, uh, we call it watered down, not going to really help. Is that I want you to maintain your savor, a smell. You must, you must go out there with a particular smell. Hallelujah. A particular color, particular hue, a particular impact wherever you go. Where will the earth be salted? How will the earth be salted? If we, the salt of the earth, lose it. That's the... And when you say lose it, you can't get crazy like them. You can't get depressed like them. If at all, we know where we go to get our, our healing. You can't be complaining and, and quarreling like, like the rest. If you're feeling really overwhelmed, go in a, in a cubicle in, your, in, in, in the, the restroom. Cry your belly full. Come back out, wash your face powder again. We, if you are a man, you have to powder and go back. Smile. That's the healing. And it's not just you being healed. You're sending out your savor. Your vibes, as it were. Think about that. <sighs> Amen. Well, I, I, it is hence what good for nothing. Listen to me. At no point God must say, we whom he has put in strategic places are no good for nothing. When, wow. <laughs> long time when your, name, your, 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 your mother or whoever described you as a good for nothing. You know that, man? man? You're a good for nothing. Wow. That's what God said to, to Cain in a, a vagabond. That's what it is. We are prophesying that we remain true to the call that's upon us. Persecuted, under pressure, but we know God has not abandoned us. Therefore, we will not abandon him. Think about it. The, ne the next verse. Verse 14 of chapter 5. Mm -hmm. He had the light of the world. Uh -huh. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Cannot be hid. And take 15 one time. Neither do men light a candle and uh -huh. put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. Uh -huh. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Right. Pay attention to that. Because we have heard about the we have heard the expression, it's bandied about all over the place, that we are salt and light. But now we are understanding that is not just some poetic uh, metaphor, as they call it, that they put there over. Um, the word Christian or over the word um, member of a church. No. What does a light do? Once a light is lit, even if it's a weak light, it can penetrate darkness to a particular circumference. And the more intense it becomes, is the greater its impact on darkness. Darkness just have to keep receding and receding and receding and receding. And as long as that light 
is being um, fed, in this case a candlestick, as long as there is wax which turns to oil to fuel the light, as long as there is wax. And, and I don't know if you've ever seen candle burn. Even when it reaches right down, there's a kind of little bowl where just the oil alone keeps the light going. And the good thing about that, you could bring another candle and just put it, put the wick right there by the very one that seemed to be dying. And it picks up again. This is what we're talking about. The networking, hallelujah, of God's grace. Uh, uh, we are proclaiming that many of us in our workspace, we're going to begin to savor that, that place, light up that place, that even those who are minimal Christians, quote unquote, going to feel the vibes first. Those who say, would criticize you, all are, all, are, all are going too deep, man, all are, all are apostle and them only have all your, or how much time are you going to church for the week? You know, eh? it's four times? No, nah, we're, not, we're not with that. Listen, when you begin to demonstrate what comes out of this mountain top journey that we take every week, remember what happened with, with Moses? Uh, when Moses came down the hill after 40 days with Jesus, with God, they knew it. And they used to run because Moses was glowing. we proclaiming that that glow will get brighter and brighter. Because it says the, the, the path of the just is like a shining light. It gets brighter and brighter every day as the day goes by. So note it. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. And nobody lights a candle and put it under a bushel. But they put it on a candlestick and it give it light unto all that is in the house. Note that sickness disease and whatever is all or uh, widely regarded in poetry and so on as a time of darkness death is regarded as the, the outing of light where we are proclaiming wherever god puts us wherever he puts us hallelujah you're a taxi driver you're a maxi driver your maxi your taxi that's your pulpit you're selling in the market. You even have a little, a little business on the, on, the, on the street corner. But you are one of them. One of us, as it were, that proclaim the name of God. Your little space is that mountain top. That top of the, the hill in the city. Where the light is actually penetrating the darkness. They must want to come and stand up by your, your corner where they're hearing good music going on. And you, you can't say, well, I don't have any device for that. You have a cell phone. If you have a cell phone, you could pull up one of those radio stations that play music, gospel music all <coughs> day and listen to <coughs> You are going to touch somebody. So, I thought we would link up this and see how we can now come into this next dimension of heal our land. Remember that as um, square foot, as we would say, or square centimeter or square meter of the land is us, me and my internals. That's the first square meter of healing. Because the spring had to be healed first. Then the water went out. Hallelujah. And we are decreeing healing. So we're going now to Ezekiel 47. 
Ezekiel 47. Hallelujah. <coughs> now, this is a, 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 a very um, fluent account of a vision that Ezekiel gets beginning from um, chapter 46. God gives him an experience of touring the heavenly temple. The heavenly temple. And an angel is escorting him, taking him to different places in the temple, the place of sacrifice, the place of worship, the inner um, sanctuary, and so on. And after that, he brings him now outside of the temple and brings him to a place where he begins to see a flow, a flow of waters. Mm -hmm. Absolutely important. Well, by now you, you will realize how many different uh, references we make to water. Right? Water is life. Water is the word of God. Water is God's people flowing. Water is the anointing or all of that. Put all of that together in one mix so that for fresh understanding. Where we have revelation of what we're going to get into at this at this juncture. It is going to take us beyond today, even into even into Wednesday, uh, Wednesday session, and maybe even deeper than that. Because at every point, we're going to be doing an application of that of what we receive to our bodies. Because he is now going to be be taken into waters that will touch him at different depths. Remember the waters are now healed. The land, wherever the water goes, the land gets healed. And, and we have to now see ourselves now moving into the water at, a next, at another level. We are not just the water now, we are not just the salt, but we are the human beings who will now walk into the healing waters. Because this time, the waters are not coming from a spring in the earth. We will see that the waters, if you read it right through, are now coming from the same sanctuary, the same temple, and of course, if the temple is in heaven, then you're talking about from the heart of the temple, which is the throne of God. That water is flowing from the throne of God into the earth. And it's now up to the human being to decide how far I am going, how far am I going. Yes, Jesus, yes, you have our apostles teaching us and all of that, but but I, 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 I don't know if I could go that far. Well, boy, long time when we used to go by the river and you didn't want to go in the water, oh, it's cold. Somebody will come sneak up behind you and push you right down in the pool. You better know how to swim because you can't come by the water and do not want to get wet. Oh, we're going to talk about, talk about that. So let's let's go from the from verse one. We, we go, um, yeah, King James, King James, the King James, Ezekiel forty-seven, powerful, powerful. Uh huh. Ezekiel forty-seven, verse one. Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house. Mm -hmm. Behold, waters issued out. Uh -huh. From under the threshold of the house eastward. Mm -hmm. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under. From the right side of the house. At the south side of the altar. Hmm. Right. And you notice. From the south side of the altar. Once you're talking about altar. You're talking about the, the throne of God. Because in the earth. The, our hearts are seen as God's altar. 
and where there is a physical altar. It is really uh, an anal analogy, a representation of God's throne, because out of God's throne issues life itself, mm. right? So you're talking about waters that are coming from God. Uh, we used to sing that song, where the healing waters flow, where the joys celestial go. There, there is peace and grace and love where the healing waters flow. Where, from where do you really get peace and grace and love? Only from God. So, the, so we know now the, what happened with Ezekiel, with um, Elisha in Jericho, was just a, a metaphor of what a uh, God really intends and how God works. So that was a physical thing in the earth. And now God's saying, I want you to know that there's an analogy to that in the spirit. We don't have to go to Jericho to get it. Hey, he said, but I can bring you, hey, Karaba Shanda, into the spirit like I did with Ezekiel. And begin to show you the dimensions of the anointing that I have available for those who say, yes, Lord, I'm ready to go. Hallelujah. And, and it says the anointing is going to be flowing. It's going to be there. But how far and how deep do you want to go? How much do you want it? Hallelujah, because we could, we could talk for the next year until that desire that we have felt Holy Spirit conjured up in us becomes the same in you and those around you. We give God praise for what we have been able to pass on to you today. And we just have one major um, announcement for you. Uh, you will see the flyer come up now. Our elder son, Pastor Daniel, and his wife, Pastor Angel, they will be holding, yes, the Cracked Door Conference. The Cracked Door Conference. You look at the flyer there and you see the dates coming at the very end of this month. Of February. Amen. Tell everybody all over the world because now you can just log in and globally you will receive it. He is taking it out of his brand new book, The Mystery of Time. Amen. And also don't forget we meet every Sunday morning now at nine. You've you got to come early. Lots of people, they call me afterwards and say, Apostle, I ended up over the road. Well, come early. And the glory of God is in the house. So, until we meet again, I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, where worship is a doing word, a verb, and not a noun. Declaring to you, you began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You are a God idea because when God made you, he had destiny on his mind. God bless you until we meet again or face-to-face -face at Divine Destiny Worship Center headquarters and all our branches. Amen. Bless you. Reach your goals through Jesus Christ. This has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.